seen him work tirelessly and I've seen him work late at night. And somehow, and I'm always in awe of people, he also manages to write books and do uh, screenplays and does an amazing amount of work. So I'd just like to say it's been a real pleasure working with you for the last five years. Uh, I never knew there was a moment in time when a, a split second a book is launched, but this is it. Um, and we will rip the cover off and that will be the official launch of the book. So it was just a few words of gratitude and thank you to Zafar, especially for this event. So thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mark and Eric. Thank you very much. Here's a man who one day is chronicling the life of an immigrant in Singapore and writing a fictional account. Uh, another day he is following the saga of a massive corporate fraud and what happened in, in the aftermath. Uh, a third time, he is, well, writing about a poet and nationalist, a uh, renowned Urdu poet, um, Iqbal. And now, uh, the occasion for which we are all assembled here, startup capitals. So yes, Zafar Anjum is a very interesting friend of mine, so I'm delighted to be here. Uh, uh, in front of all of you, uh, and thank you, Zafar, for the opportunity of engaging you in thank this you. conversation. Um, we will get to the book, which, although you launched it just now, um, I have had the chance to read. Um, but before that, since I mentioned all these different things that you've done, apart from your day job of, uh, of editing, uh, uh, tech-related uh, content. Um, walk us through the process of, of your journey as a writer. Because if you were a startup entrepreneur, then one would scratch one's head and say, hey, wait a minute, one day he's doing Twitter, the other day he's doing Airbnb. So, so who is Zafar Anjum, the writer, and where does he get his ideas from? How does he decide what he wants to do next, and how does he go about doing it? Okay, thank you very much, Andy, for that great introduction and that conundrum that you have passed. <laughs> uh, actually, I was thinking this morning, you know, that uh, the same question, that what kind of writer I am, because I am, I've been tackling so many other different subjects, from literature to translating poetry to writing on technology. And fundamentally, I think that, you know, I don't want to limit myself to one thing, probably and the kind of inputs that have gone in me um, as a person in my making uh, has made me sort of limitless in that sense of approaching different topics and subjects. And I think it is true for all of us. Sometimes we try to focus on one thing and we are so wedded to that thing, we're so passionate about it that we sort of start to disregard everything else. But in my case, I think uh, uh, I have been sort of trying to take literature in a broad sense and technology in another broad sense together. So even if you see different manifestations of my creative outputs uh, as uh, fiction or short story novels or books on business and technology, I see them as part of the, you know, the two different sides of the coin basically. And I am very happy to be on both sides and very happy to be writing about both sides. And talking about technology, you know, even when I'm writing business books or technology books, in my mind, I'm writing novels. I am very much influenced by a writer called V.S. Naipaul. And I've sort of uh, read most of his books. So Naipaul, when he was starting out as a writer, he would travel to different countries. Uh, he would go to South America and write books about dictators. So in my mind, I'm doing something similar, but Instead of writing about dictators, I'm writing about innovators, and I'm writing about entrepreneurs. So for me, I'm taking a journey very similar to Nepal's journey, but my subject is not politics, but innovation, technology, business, entrepreneurship. Failure is not a bad word. Failure is celebrated. And in all my life, I had not heard anybody talking about that. I, I grew up in India, and uh, Failure was never considered a good thing in India. 
even in Singapore, I saw that failure was always uh, looked down upon. And uh, coming from a writing background, looking at different writers, you know, uh, writers sort of, not only they fail most of the times, they are quoting failure, you know. So from that point of view, I was looking at this, that the, here is one industry, here is one sector where failure is being celebrated. It is okay to fail. It is okay to try out new ideas. And as writers, we do that all the time, right? Every book, Chris is here, a very dear friend of mine is a writer. Every time we start a project, whether it's a novel or it's a poem or it's a collection of short stories, we don't know how successful we'll be at the end of the day, whether the story will work, whether the poem will work or not. So we are always setting up as failure. And also as a person, you know, if you are venturing upon the path of becoming a writer, you don't know whether you will make it or not because only probably 1% of the writers really make it, right? The rest of them are like somewhere there struggling, uh, doing different kinds of jobs. So I was trying to find connections between these, these two things and it suddenly sort of sparked, you know, in me that this is something that I should look at. And I was very curious about it. And I had no idea about this startup ecosystem. I found it very intriguing and mysterious. And I thought that maybe it's the same situation in a lot of other people who are not in this sphere of activity.